So I got an interesting question the other day, which was about whether you can use dreams, whether you can lucid dream or have a normal dream about something that you thought you didn't have a memory of and actually learn more about that memory. So let me give you an example before you click away and think this is too confusing. Uh, by the way, my name's Steph and I teach uh, lucid dreaming consciousness for everyone who doesn't know. So. Uh, yeah, so welcome to the channel. So I got this question asking basically, can you in a dream learn more about a memory that you had and learn about something that you didn't know you had a memory of? Let's, let me give you an example of that because this question is based around your subconscious mind and it's basically asking, can our subconscious mind record things that our conscious mind or our conscious memories are not aware of? So, you know, at this point in time, we've been doing a lot of stuff in our lives, okay? We've been to different places, we've met people, we've had all these experiences. So the question is, does our subconscious mind remember everything that we consciously forget. Can I, in a dream, go back to a scene where I was at a fun fair when I was 10 years old and explore or uncover bits of that memory that I didn't know I had? And this question is actually kind of controversial. There's a bit of science and a bit of pseudoscience revolving around this and a bit, not pseudoscience, but there's a few things which we can't really say for sure one way or the other, okay? So I'm gonna give you now my opinion on that question. So firstly, I wanna preface this all by saying Saying your brain knows incredible amounts of stuff <laughs> in layman's terms, right? It knows a lot more than you think it does. So let me just quickly explain your subconscious mind is the bit sort of below the surface that's always hidden. Your conscious mind is the tiny bit at the top, which is kind of like the driver. If you imagine like an enormous machine, like a tank, but much bigger than a tank, imagine more like a commercial airline plane. And then right in the driver's seat, you have an ant. That is kind of um, a good analogy. If you imagine an ant driving a commercial airplane, that is how powerful and big your subconscious is compared to your conscious mind. So your conscious mind is what you are watching this video with now. You're aware of the fact you're watching this video, you're looking around, you're maybe glancing at the comments or looking at the suggested videos. You know, maybe you can hear things going on in the street around you um, or in your room. Uh, that is your conscious mind that is aware of those bits of information. And our conscious mind can take in and interpret and understand between 16 and 40, 40 bits of information per second, which might sound like a lot until I tell you how much the subconscious mind can process process per second. Have a guess. Le leave a comment be below. What, how many bits of information per second do you think the unconscious or the subconscious mind processes? Per second, it's 11 million. 11 million bits of information per second all the time is how much, your, how much information and data your subconscious mind is taking in, interpreting, analyzing, and sorting out into what we know as our conscious experience of reality. I'm gonna put it in quotation marks because I've made another video about what reality really is. So as you've probably realized, it's a lot of information. And so there is a huge, massive avalanche of stuff that we don't know we know. Stuff that we don't know that is in our unconscious and subconscious minds. A lot of this is pretty pointless information, okay? Things that we don't really need to know. And that's why our, our brains have evolved to do it like that. They've evolved so that we consciously are made aware of the relevant and most important bits of information out of that sea, that ocean of 11 million bits of information per second. Our brains have evolved to show us and make us aware of what is important. At least so our brains think. Of course, we miss details and we miss a lot of the things that are important. And we also let, and this is kind of a big problem with today's society, subconsciously we let things enter our minds that we don't really want in there. Programming, conditioning, negative or limiting beliefs, negativity, fear-based narratives preached by the media. That's an entirely different topic, okay? And we need to be really careful about what ideas and thoughts and beliefs we let into our subconscious mind because we're being programmed all the time. Whatever you watch, whatever content you watch, uh, even this video in a way is programming, but I would like to think it's positive programming. It's trying to help you as opposed to trying to instill a fear, a belief, um, the urge to buy something or whatever negative or manipulative programming is out there, especially in Hollywood and on the media. So going back to my earlier point, the subconscious mind takes in a huge amount of information. Every single second of every single day, you're processing eight, uh, 11 million, sorry, 11 million bits of information per second. So you can be very sure that within your brain, within your mind, is a lot more than you think. Now, before the scientists among you get a bit angry in the comments and start saying things about, that's not how short-term and long-term memory work, I know that, I understand, I'm getting to that bit. So the way that memories are encoded into your short or long-term memory works in a few ways. So firstly, we have what is known as an eidetic memory. Your eidetic memory is, well, I can show you right now. Let's say if you turn to your left right now, look at what you can see, and then turn back and look at the camera, look at me. 
or in your case, look at the screen. <laughs> uh, that is your, and, and then think about what you just saw and sort of look at that picture in your head uh, without looking back, okay? Just try and imagine and visualize what you just saw when you turned to your left. That is known as your eidetic memory. Now, if you go a month or even a day from now, you will likely forget what you saw, unless it's somewhere you already know, like your room, okay? If it's a new scene, you'll probably forget within a, a day or so what you saw. Now, your eidetic memory is basically like a very temporary memory system, okay? And you can, through the encoding process, you can translate that eidetic memory into long or short-term memory, which then influences and enters your dreams. Now, Here's where things get very debatable. Uh, and by the way, just a quick tangent here, photographic memory. That's where you're able to do what we just discussed, look to the side quickly, uh, except you don't forget anything ever. So, so you can recall details from what you just saw and from any scene you've experienced in your entire life as if you were looking at a photograph. It's pretty impressive uh, and usually, and not all the time, but usually when someone has a photographic memory, it's actually considered a bit of a disorder because in order to have that, you're usually sacrificing something. And in many cases, it's that you're, you have a damaged corpus callosum in your brain. You have a damaged corpus callosum, which is the, basically the bridge between the two hemispheres of your brain. Uh, I'm sure you know that we have two hemispheres in our brain, two sides, the left and the right brain. The left brain is for critical thinking, logic, you know, uh, reasoning. The right brain is more creative and taps more into your subconscious mind and your it connects dots in ways that the left brain just can't do. Your right brain makes, well, no, I should say specifically, when you connect the two together, it really does show you how powerful your brain is. Now, when you have a damaged corpus callosum, you're basically only active in the left side of the brain, usually, or the right side, but that's a different type of disorder. Um, however, when you have that damaged corpus callosum, what usually happens is you become amplified. You're, you're, one of your hemispheres of your brain becomes sort of boosted. And in this case, it's usually the left brain, which means you can remember things very easily uh, just by glancing at them. And if you've seen the film Rain Man, um, then you'll know what that is like. Now going back to dreams. So dreams are made from a few things. And this is, by the way, just my opinion. Take this with a pinch of salt, okay? This is my personal opinion about the content of dreams and where they come from. It comes from three places, okay? It comes from, number one, your memories. So this this is uh, tied into your eidetic and then your short and long-term memory. Uh, but that's also involving things like day residue, which is like leftover bits of memory from what you were doing during the day. So that's the first thing. The first way or the first source of our dreams is the memories. The second way is through your subconscious and conscious mind creating creating things. Inspiration, genuine inspiration. Uh, and this can come from many different places in the brain. Many different systems are involved with that. And then the third, and this is where I'm going to lose half of you, uh, the third way, the third type of content that can enter your dreams, in my opinion, is from higher planes of existence, higher beings, other dimensions, you know, your higher self, your astral body, and all of these different things, these different um, energies and energetic levels that can come into your dreams in the form of messages, dream characters, dream scenes and symbols. And this isn't just me, you know, how to lucid Steph talking crazy again. Uh, this is actually document, not documented, but it's re reported in many different civilizations, the idea that dreams can be used as messengers from higher beings and all kinds of things. Dreams have messages within them. And if you're interested in the messages behind dreams, well, I do actually have a dream meaning course now, which uh, I haven't announced it officially yet, but it's pretty cool. And it explains how to interpret and understand the meanings behind your dreams and interpret and understand and translate those messages from your subconscious mind, your memories, uh, your internal processing, structures and also from the higher beings that are giving you the messages as well. So the link for that is in the description, but that's where your dreams come from. So the question is, going back to my first question, which I'm trying to answer in this long video, okay, is this, can we learn more from our memories than we thought we knew in a dream? Can we explore the memory as if we were experiencing it for the first time in a new way? Yes and no, okay? The problem is, when you have a dream, you're not only experiencing things from your memory, but you're also creating new things. So if you were to have a dream about, let's say, let's give you a clear example, okay? Let's say if you wanted, you were dreaming about a memory you had when you were a child, when you were walking through a forest, and you only remember part of this thing. You only remember sort of being in one area of the forest. So the question is, if you then have a dream about that scene, that memory, and then in the dream, you walk over to the other part of the forest that you can't really remember in your waking life, how do you tell the difference between if that is really part of your memory that your subconscious mind has stored but your conscious mind can't access and are you really experiencing that memory in a way that you have never done before or, and this is really going to keep you up at night, is it just your mind creating a dream? 
Or the third option, is it a higher being sending you a message through the dream? It's impossible to tell because if you can't consciously remember something, if it's not actually a memory, how on earth are you gonna tell whether you've experienced part of an, a memory you didn't know you had in a dream or whether you've just had a dream about something new that you've just created and made up? It's impossible to tell. The only way of knowing for sure is to do an experiment like this. This is the challenge to you today, All right? You're gonna to need to work with your parents here or somebody who remembers details and memories about you when you were younger that you don't remember. So set the intention to have a lucid dream or a dream about a scene, a memory that you don't have full access to in your brain. Let's say if you only half remember the day when you went fishing with your mum or dad when you were younger. You only half remember the day. So the memory in your conscious mind, in your conscious brain, is only partially there. You can't remember what happened when you went, or you know, before you ended up at this particular part on the lake, let's say. Your parent or whoever was with you at the time will remember. Maybe they even have photos. So what you can do is you can, before you ask them, enter a lucid dream, access that memory, and then try and explore around a little bit. And then write down what you remember when you wake up, and then ask whoever was with you if that really happened. And that's one way of proving to yourself whether you can, through lucid dreaming, access memories that you didn't know you had. If you can, that's pretty impressive. And I have done this, by the way. I've done this a few times. It's not easy because when you're in a dream, your subconscious tries to do all kinds of things except what you want it to do. <laughs> so actually getting yourself to have that specific dream scene with that memory, is quite difficult in itself. But if you can do it, you'll be in for a surprise.